Hey everyone, Casey here from StartScreenPrintingNow.com and welcome to the second part of our series on how to create artwork for screen printing in Illustrator. Today uh, we're going to talk about uh, typesetting and I know you're probably groaning and saying I know how to typeset in Illustrator, it's pretty easy. Um, there's uh, some special things you can do to really make your typesetting pop on uh, in Illustrator. Uh, especially for screen printing because you know 90% of your t uh, requests for screen printing might just be simple typesetting and there's you can uh, do some more to add some value to that and give them some options and some really uh, cool things you can do we're gonna look at the appearance panel which is a panel you probably never even opened or looked at or thought of um, and it's probably one of the best panels in Illustrator and it's really awesome when combined with uh, uh, typesetting. So we'll get into that. We'll also get into how to organize your fonts. We're also going to be warping and transforming our text to make it really look cool. All right, so let's get started. We're just going to typeset something real quick. Um, let's say we have a request from a client, and they just want their team name on a shirt. And that's all they give you. Their team name is Wildcats, like 90% of the sports teams in the world. The first thing I usually like to do with typesetting is you see this text box. I can I can drag this and it the text isn't affected by it. You know, I always like to cut, uh, highlight the text, cut it out of the text frame, delete the text frame, and then paste it back on the artboard. Uh, this allows me to uh, I can just grab these handles now on the text frame and easily transform my text. All right now we're going to add a spot color to it. We have a spot color white right here. And now we need to figure out what font to use here. You know, obviously we want something sporty. And we have this program here called Linotype Font Explorer. There are a few uh, font organizing programs. And this one I like to use is Linotype Font Explorer. There's also Extensus Suitcase. I remember back in the day my dad using Extensus Suitcase and not really understanding what it was. But um, these for font organizing programs are really important because, you know, a lot of what you're going to be doing is typesetting. So you need to have a big library of fonts. You can get a lot of free fonts. There's You can pay for fonts if you want. Um, as you can see on this machine, I have over 7,000 fonts installed. And I actually have over 6,000 of them activated, which can kind of slow down your machine and it can slow down Illustrator and Photoshop startup times. It makes it, uh, it has to like build this font library every time it, it starts up. It really slows it down. So it's good to just have the fonts you need or that you're usually using activated. I need to go through and make changes to this. But as you can see, I can preview of these fonts like right on the fly, just see everything I have and look just a quick glance, be like, oh, this looks like a good font for this job. And, you know, you'll have your Western fonts, your sports fonts, your uh, script fonts, and you'll have eventually have all these memorized. But and you can also right here, you know, type in your um, example type and just see what it looks like with a certain font. From this program, you can also activate and deactivate fonts and delete them. There's also a store, like kind of like an iTunes store for fonts. I'm going to choose a font here, uh, just a kind of a bland one, uh, Orleans, kind of sporty block font. All right, now we're going to start using the appearance panel. Uh, I'm going to put this front and center so we can talk about it. It kind of shows you the uh, fill and stroke, and you can actually add multiple fills and multiple strokes to the same artwork. Um, this is really, really cool for text because you can have your text stay dynamic and add all sorts of effects to it, but at the same time your text can remain remain editable so you can change anything you want and um, you know if so if someone has a change for you, oh we want to change this. We're not the wildcats. We're actually the bear cats, I forgot because uh, we're such a generic team. So real quick, I'm just going to show you one little thing you can do. Uh, let's say I have this this uh, text right here. I just want to add a black stroke to it, um, to the outside of the text. 
Well, normally I can only put the stroke on text to the center of it. I can't align the stroke to the outside. That's kind of a bummer. If I um, took this off and I outlined my text, now I can put a stroke to the outside. You know, it would normally be in the center. Then once it was outlined text, I could put a, a stroke around it. But I want this to still be editable text. So let's go back. So what I like to do is you can take off the fill. This is the first step. Take the fill off of your text. Then you're going to go and say add new fill from the appearance panel. Uh, and just I'm just going to add that white back in. That seems kind of weird to take it off and then put it back on. But this allows me to, I can now drag the stroke under the fill. Drag the stroke below the fill. First time ever, I drag the stroke under the fill. Drag. So now I can um, make this as big as I want. And it's going to be aligned, the stroke's going to be aligned to the outside. And it's really cool. And I can still edit this text. Another thing I can do is I can add multiple fills and strokes to the same artwork. If I go here to my appearance panel again and say add new fill, I now have two fills on this same artwork. They're both yellow. I can make this top one a gradient. Add spot colors to the gradient. And now I can set this layer to multiply on top of the one below it. Um, so they, these different fills can interact with each other. Pretty cool. Uh, I can also add multiple strokes. Um, let's add a stroke. Let's add a blue stroke. And I'll make that 10 points. And I can also duplicate this stroke now. I'll say duplicate item and add another stroke of the same um, of the same color above it. I'll change that to white and make it a little bit smaller. So now you can see I have the gradient multiplied over a yellow fill, and then I have a stroke, a white stroke, and then a, a blue stroke right underneath this. And I didn't have to outline my text to do all this. I can still edit this text. Another thing I like to do is I'm going to take off this blue stroke and instead I'm going to add another fill, but I'm going to make it that same blue color and move it back to the bottom. And instead of making a stroke, I'm going to say offset path under effects. And offset path, you can make it negatively smaller or positively bigger. And this kind of, uh, it's almost like you're stro stroking around your fill, but it's actually just making the artwork bigger or you can contract it if you want. So I'm going to do this, make it a little bit smaller, offset the path. Okay, okay so now I have a fill that's kind of acting like a stroke. Um, and it's just, it's just made the, f the fill bigger than it was now. I offset this path because I like I want to have a solid fill to do this next part. I'm going to do go up to effect, say distort and transform and transform. And what this does is it moves, it's going to move the fill. The origin of the of the artwork is going to stay the, in the same place, but I can transform where the artwork shows up on the screen. If I preview this, I can move it horizontally and vertically here and still leave this text uh, dynamic. Um, I can change the horizontal and vertical, str it'll stretch it. But I'm not going to change those right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, this fill, this blue fill move down. But I also want it to, st at the same time, stay behind this yellow bear cats. So I can do multiple copies. Uh, I'll do one copy. So now it's kind of like a big blocky shadow behind there. It gives it a pretty cool effect. I can also do like multiple copies if I wanted to make it really big. I'll do 10. 
And see, that's pretty big. So I have all these effects on different layers within the type, and I can still edit this text. It's crazy. Now I'm going to add some warp effects to this text. Um, you know, I can I can always shear this text. Something simple um, that looks pretty cool. But let's let's make some cool warp effects. So I like to sometimes make the first and last letters a little bit bigger and do show options and I'm going to change the offset these letters so that they match the height of all everything else so I made this bigger and lowered it Let's see what these were 124 and negative 21 So that's kind of a cool effect. And I'm going to now add a envelope distort make with warp. Um, I'm sure you've seen the warp panel before, but um, adding these text effects from the appearance panel with warp is looks pretty cool. I'm going to do arc lower, and that's going to squeeze the text. I'm going to do ne a negative bend so our text bends downward like this. It looks a little stretched like this so I always like to stretch it back out. So now we have some cool text that is still dynamically editable although within a warp it is a little bit weirder to edit text. You have to go inside this envelope that warp creates and edit from there and it's not really the best but okay so now we've seen what we can do with uh, typesetting in Illustrator and what the appearance panel can do really there's so much more you can do in the appearance panel you can add noise to certain fills you can add all sorts of filter effects you can do uh, inner glow let's let's take a look at what that might look like uh, let's add an inner inner shadow to this text um, we can still go and select our yellow uh, so on my yellow fill of this text I'm going to go to filter stylize and I'm going to do inner glow and I'm going to actually make this more like an inner shadow. So I'm going to add more black to it. And now we have some even more effects to this text that look pretty cool. It looks like it's kind of cut out into the shirt. And this inner glow is only affecting that yellow layer. You can see you can collapse these these fills and strokes to uh, make it more organized um, but you can also view so this the to recap we have this gradient fill multiplied then we have below that a yellow fill with an inner glow then we have a stroke this white stroke and then we have a th third fill at the very bottom offset so that it pokes out uh, um, from all around the art and then we have a transform applied to that and this text is still editable so what's really cool about this is now that I have created this this text style let's say I wanted to add it to multiple things like let's say there's a whole league and they're all gonna have the same jerseys with this same style but the team name is gonna change I can now open my styles let's see where is it graphic styles panel right here and with this whole style selected I can hit new graphic style and that gives me all these options that I've already selected in the appearance panel and I can now type type something there's my name and I can just apply this exact style to it without having to go through all that again and I can um, edit these colors really quick 
Um, and, you know, do this multiple times. All right, so I think we learned a lot in this one about typesetting and how it can be really interesting for screen printing and how you can use the appearance panel to leave your text dynamic and editable while adding a ton of effects to it. With You don't have to outline your text and convert the fonts to shapes uh, to make all these edits. There's still a lot you can do as text. So if you like this video, hit subscribe and go to startscreenprintingnow.com to see more tips and tricks. Thanks, guys. Thank you.